What is going on, everybody? How you doing? I am stagtastic, coming back at you in way of the hunter. Today I thought I'd do a quick video about five things that beginners really need to know and understand in their early game experience to make them a stronger and more successful hunter in the future. Looking back on to when I first started playing this game, it was really challenging, it was very different. But these are five things that I wish I had known and understood before embarking on my journey. Let me go ahead and preface this by saying that most of this information can actually be found in your encyclopedia. But like most of us, including myself, we don't like to take the time to dive into all the nitty gritty rules and different features that the game has to offer right away. Um, like I said, I know that I didn't do that when I first started playing, so that's why I'm making this video uh, to show you some of the things that I wish I had paid a little bit more attention to when I first started playing. The first thing that I want to bring up is that these maps are absolutely huge. They are big maps and they are really big for a reason. Most people are not used to coming into a game like this, this big open world game, and it's very intimidating for them. Uh, with these maps being as large as they are, and so they start thinking, there is no way that I'm going to ever get good at this game. Well, that couldn't be further from the truth. Nez Perce is approximately seven and a half miles long by seven miles wide, and Transylvania is really like a seven by seven square mile. Um, if there were any smaller though, I'm guessing that a lot of players would actually feel like they're confined and that there are not enough areas to hunt. Then you probably have some really dedicated players who play this nonstop and, and they may even feel like they're going to run out of things to do if these maps were any smaller. But that is not the case in Way of the Hunter. So it's important to understand the size of these maps because a lot of new players, they want to jump in with both feet and start shooting at everything they see and hunting animals immediately. However, once you take a step back and you understand the sheer scale of these maps and understand how complex they are with all the different types of locations and the geographical terrain, for example, you have highlands, uh, lowland forests, you got swamps, mountains, plains, grasslands. Once you take a step back and you kind of take that in and understand, it's going to set you up with the right kind of mindset. And that is a mindset that says this game is going to be a marathon, not a sprint, and I'm really going to have to put in some work uh, if I'm going to be successful. If you are a hunter in real life, then the work that you put in in this game isn't going to be daunting or scary. It's actually going to be quite enjoyable. The Way of the Hunter is by far the most interactive and realistic hunting game out there. But just like in real life, you're going to have to go out, scout, explore, you're going to have to find these need zones, pattern the animals, etc. if you want to have the best and most rewarding experience. But like I said, if you're a real hunter, and I like to hunt in real life, uh, I really actually just enjoy being out uh, in this environment, going out into the, into the valley and just seeing what it has to offer. So I would encourage anyone to take the time to explore the map and enjoy the beautiful, this really picturesque, Bob Ross inspired views that are everywhere you look. If you're brand new to the game, one of the th tips that I would give you is to keep an eye out as you're just walking around in the woods, keep an eye out for natural game trails. Large game will leave these uh, game trails that you are very clear to see and you can actually follow those and they will always lead you to a need zone. Once you find that need zone and figure out what's there, then you can begin to plan your next hunt. The second thing that I want to bring up that new players need to understand is that animals have a primary and secondary habitat location. For example, the primary habitat for white-tailed deer is grasslands and lowland forests. And the secondary habitat for white-tailed deer is in the highland forest areas. The primary habitats give the animals the best chances to thrive and produce large bucks 
with the best genes. And these are the areas where you will always find the biggest and best trophy deer with the highest genetic makeup. In contrast, animals who live in their secondary habitat will typically, typically have a below average score. Now that's not to say that you can't go out and find trophies or call herds in a secondary habitat to produce larger game. In fact, that's what you want to do. You should want, you should be doing that to get rid of those bad genes and bring the good ones in. But I am saying that you're going to have a harder time doing so in their secondary habitat as opposed to in their primary habitats. Just like in real life, deer want to find the best place to live, but most of the time, deer are going to live anywhere that they can find a consistent source of food, water, and low pressure from predators, even though the overall conditions are not perfect for them. Uh, however, if they can't find those premier locations, then they're going to settle for their secondary habitats, and it's the same way in this game. The third thing that I want to bring up to beginning players is that animals will respond to hunting pressure around their need zones. And you can actually drive a herd from a single area until that pressure dies down. I've seen a lot of people commenting on different threads, you know, hey, what happened to these animals? Where did they go? And it could very well be that there is just too much pressure in that area and so they've moved on. Animals in this game are very smart and they will go to other need zones and these need zones may be by perhaps uh, You may not have even discovered those need zones yet So you're kind of in the dark as far as where they went But they will go to other need zones if they feel that there is too much hunting pressure in a particular area Hunting pressure does not just include you firing your rifle into a herd of deer it also includes just walking around and scouting, driving through the area, causing too much noise, causing animals to spook. And many times players get frustrated because they can't find these animals quickly in these spots where they're supposed to be. And it could really be one of three things. The first thing that it could be is that it's just the wrong time of day for the animals to be there, which is why you're not seeing them. The second thing could be that you're looking in a particular need zone area that they frequent rarely as opposed to often. In other words, it may not be their primary need zone source. Or the third reason animals might not be showing up is because the hunting pressure there is just too high. And what you need to do is back out of the area, let the area rest before returning. So be sure to use your favorite hunting spots sparingly. After a few in-game days, the animals will come back to those spots and you can hunt them again. So let me encourage you to expand your horizons, do a lot of scouting, do a lot of exploring, and find multiple spots that you can rotate your hunts throughout in the area. So this map is huge, we've covered that, so there should be no shortage of backup hunting locations. The fourth thing that I want to bring in is that you will need to intentionally set some time aside each time you go into the woods to begin to upgrade your character perks. Character perks give you a huge advantage as a hunter from being able to hold your breath longer while aiming down your sights to being able to be more stealthy as you try to approach animals. But perhaps, in my opinion, one of the most important perks that you want to get early on is you want to be able to call your animals over to you. Uh, this can be found in the strategist category or strategist category, however you want to say it. Initially, when you purchase your callers from the shop, you're only going to have access to one type of call. For example, the deer caller will only allow you to call does once you buy it. But once you have used the caller for a while, once you have called a doe in and she has responded to your call, that's how you know it counts as a called animal and she is making her way towards you. Once you have called animals to you, then you can harvest that doe and it will allow you to gain progress towards upgrading your calling abilities. Upgrading your calling abilities is done automatically once you meet that required amount of uh, harvests. 
You don't need to go back or purchase any extra calls or anything like that. There's no upgrading the calls. It's, it's you know, with money, it's all done automatically. So you don't have to worry about that. As you continue to call and harvest called animals, you're going to begin to unlock the perks that you need to call smaller bucks with your tier 2 calls and then eventually to call the big trophy bucks and big trophy animals with tier 3 calls. So let me encourage you to decide which perks mean the most to you, go into the tree, see what you like, and upgrade your character as fast as you can. Some of these perks are going to be unlocked naturally just as you play the game but some are going to need some intentional planning. Use these hunts to be teaching opportunities for you to become a better, more successful hunter. The last thing that I want to bring up, guys, is to focus on herd management early. A lot of people, they're kind of shy about shooting certain animals, but do not be afraid to shoot a one-star, two-star, or even a three-star mature. And I would add to that, do not be afraid to shoot does, even though they don't have any kind of trophy rating. I remember when I would go out in the woods, I would look for herds where there are too many does and not enough bucks, and I would shoot the does. That's called herd management. The reason you may want to call a doe is, like I just said, there may be too many does in a particular herd. And so I would encourage you to look for those mature does who are at the end of their life cycle, versus shooting a young doe or an adult doe. Herd management is the action of calling animals so that the animals with the lowest genes do not continue to circulate in the gene pool. For example, a mature white-tailed buck is already between the ages of six to eight years old when you find them. And if you find that buck, that mature buck, and he's only a one or two star, there is a very small chance that he's ever going to get any bigger. So we can actually presume with confidence that this particular buck has very low genes. So we don't want him to continue to breed and circulating those bad genes. So you're going to have to be strategic on which animals you call. For, an, for example, again, if you find a herd of deer, okay, and most of the bucks, let's say they're one-star youngs or two-star adults, but then you see that there's this three-star mature buck. Would you take that three-star mature or a two-star adult? You know, how can you tell which one you should take? And in this case, I would recommend taking that three-star mature. That's just what I would do, knowing that it's already near the end of his life cycle and really won't get any bigger. Uh, I would leave that two-star adult since it has all the potential to go on to a three or four-star mature because of his age and the progress that he's already making. As you're starting out in Way of the Hunter and you begin, begin to level up your character perks and understand the game more fully, uh, use that time to focus on herd management to get the biggest and best trophies in-game as fast as you can. As a side note, you don't always have to call animals to bag big trophies. I found a handful of my five stars just by exploring and scouting. Even though I may have never scouted that area before, or and I have never seen those animals before. But, as you practice your herd management, you are going to begin to leave a lot less to luck and a lot more to your skills. Well everybody, there you have it. Those are five easy tips that beginners need to know and understand if you are going to have the best start to your hunting experience in Way of the Hunter. Let's recap. Number one, understand that these maps are absolutely huge. Don't try to rush it. Take your time and enjoy the journey as you go. Embrace how big these maps are and you're going to enjoy it that much even more. Number two, understand that animals have primary and secondary habit locations. Take a time, go into your encyclopedia, do some uh, educating yourself on what kind of habitats are primary versus secondary, and you're going to find a lot more game by doing that. And number three, understand that animals respond to hunting pressure around their need zones. 
don't over hunt an area don't continually go into one particular area over and over again and expect to find animals there that's not just going to happen they're going to leave but don't worry they will come back once that pressure buys down fourth upgrade your character perks as fast as you can doing this will give you a much more enjoyable experience early on as you continue to progress and lastly guys get into the game practice that herd management early on i know that when you're starting out it can be difficult to find herds in general real quickly what i'll show you is right around the cabin down this river there are so many animals in here that you can begin to practice your herd management on so really take advantage of that with that being said thank you so much for joining me today i really hope that you have learned something and if you are not new to the game maybe you're a little more experienced perhaps you've learned something here as well if so guys consider hitting that like button subscribe to the channel i really enjoy bringing this content to you every time we enter the nez Perce valley doesn't cost you a thing but means a whole lot to me again i am stagtastic we'll see you all real soon Happy hunting, take care.